Pennsylvania's got more miles of moving water than any other state in the lower 48. I could fish the same stream, the same exact piece of water, 250 days a year, and every day it would be a little bit different. Prep work and making sure you've got a clean boat, making sure you've got gear in good working order, making sure your flies are organized, and making sure you've got clothing that's conducive to the weather conditions. All that stuff takes time, so you know, just the prep work involved in a one-day trip, especially if you're changing gears from, say, being in western Pennsylvania for four or five days, and then the next day I could be in my backyard on Fishing Creek fishing for brown trout. My name is Lance Wilt. I am the founder and owner of Outcast Anglers and the manager at Limestone Lodge. Growing up in central Pennsylvania, we have some of the best trout fishing in the world. And that's also, not only do we have some of the best trout fishing in the world, but we have educated fish. So educated fish make you do everything right. And when you have to do everything right day in and day out, 250 days a year, you can take that knowledge and sometimes it's just straight up sub, uh, stubbornness um, and go to a new place and figure it out. You see a little bit of a fin, you see a little bit of movement, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, there's a fish. And you stop and you look and all of a sudden you make out the entire outline of the fish. When you stand up on top of a bridge and you start waving your arms all around, it's a dead giveaway. Fish see it and they make you. The fish have cone-shaped vision, so the higher you are above their head, the wider they can see out. And people think like deep water is a refuge it is not only does it protect them from overhead predators but it also allows them to see a wider range on their left and their right the last day we were there was the day we got to, to go out in a boat me and the guide in one boat and Lance and two other fishermen in the other boat fishing more than 15 minutes at the most and he said we're back here in a boat trying to catch up to them and they're up there trying to put a net under the fish and we didn't even realize that they had gone on and uh, the only problem was uh, when you're moving along like that they don't fool with the fish very long they get it up to the boat and you better be there when they're netting it because the only time you see it is when they pick it out of the water to take the hook out and then you see him release it but uh he sure could catch him Everybody always seems to worry about their kids. Um, a guy will call and book a trip with his daughter or his son, and they'll be like, look, this, this day is about my daughter or my son becoming a better fisherman or getting them into the sport. And it's always funny because they start the same, the, every trip starts the same way. Uh, the parent wants to take a step back and let the kid have a good time. The kid quickly becomes uh, good they pick up the skill sets, the motor skills improve, and pretty soon the kids catch more fish than the parents do. And it's just, it's a, sometimes it can be a slow process depending upon the fishing, but um, the kids pick up on it very, very quickly. And then it becomes more about catching multiple fish or bigger fish. And um, kids in general, I think, pick up on it better than the adults do. And 
uh, I can I can think of a trip, you know, in Arkansas just a couple months ago where I had one of my guides and his son in the boat, and Jeff, my guide, was not um, wasn't standing all over Caleb all day. It was very very lax and almost laissez-faire with his approach to how um, I managed Caleb. But Caleb never said a word. He cast all day, fished hard, fished harder than his dad did, and. Um, that to me, it, it, it never ceases to amaze me how quickly young, young adults and children pick up on the sport. My brain does not stop. But like after an exhausting day on the water where I've been getting the shit kicked out of me by wind or by tough clients or whatever, I just want to turn it all off. And I've gotten better about thinking about the little things that are important and just maybe not being so intense when you're out there on the water and like being able to identify those moments that are not necessarily about the fish, but about the experience or about the significance of the trip or, you know, whatever. When I need to decompress after multiple days on the water, then the stress builds up and there'll be days that I have guys that have the ability and choose not to listen. There'll be days that I have guys that don't have the ability but are listening to everything that I choose to do. And there's days that everything seems to be going right but the fish just don't want to cooperate. All of that stress builds up over time and the first thing I do uh, the first opportunity I get to have a day off I choose to go fishing and it's it's funny because guys will say to me like what are you going to do tomorrow or after a long hard day they'll be like well you probably don't want to be on the water again soon and I'll say no tomorrow even though I have a day off I'm going to go out and fish <laughs> 